And um, it's good to be together. I'm looking forward to what God has in store for us and glad that you are here for this third in a th four-part series. We'll be wrapping this up next week. But um, we're going to be talking about a tortured soul in just a minute. But before we do that, I want to ask, how many of you had an older brother or sister who liked to torture you as a kid? Would you just raise your hand? Some of you have that, and uh, I um, have a confession to make. I was an older brother, and I didn't prompt him, I didn't expect it, but my brother's sitting here on the front row, and his hand was higher than anybody, it seemed to me. Um, sometimes, usually the uh, older, because usually, at least in the early stages, they're a little bit bigger, uh, would torment the younger sibling. Um, and one of the prime ways uh, that they would do that often would be that they would kind of get you down and sit on you, Maybe put their knees on your uh, shoulders and hold you down and maybe tap you on the chest really hard or flick your nose or maybe even sometimes threaten to drop certain things in your face. Some of it from your, their mouth or other debris that might come along. Just all kinds of ideas, but they were torturing um, that younger brother or sister. And as I said, um, I was the older brother and at the time that all those kinds of things happened, I was the bigger brother. But if you've seen my brother while he's been visiting here this week, you know he's now the big brother. And uh, he outgrew me by a, a good little bit, so it's not always a good idea to think you're always going to be the biggest. But um, when it comes to this matter of torture, we often think of physical torture. But I want you to think about that a little bit differently today because um, we're going to think about physical torture, not so much of the body, but a spiritual torture of the soul. And... Um, if you've missed the first two messages in this series, I'd encourage you to go to Seymour First uh, online at uh, SeymourFirst.com. And, um, you know, some have asked me about it just today, about being able to watch or listen online. And you can do that from our website. Or if you want to like us on Facebook, uh, you'll be able to see right when those messages uh, are posted and also when songs are posted. The songs today, we post independently each individual song. We also post messages from week to week. But you can always access that information from our website. If you've been here, you know that one of the key thoughts that's driving this series, and you, I'd encourage you to write this down, I'm not sure there's a spot for it in your worship folder, but we need to remember that we are not a body with a soul, but we are in fact a soul with a body. Um, that sounds like a play on words, but the point is we're really not our body. Our body is the house that our soul lives in. And when our body dies, we don't die. Um, we, we don't die, our bodies will die, but our soul will, uh, who we are on the inside, will live on for all eternity. And that's why Jesus said, you know, what profit is it or what good is it for a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his own soul? Uh, the point is that many people are doing just that. They're gaining the world. They're, they're working to uh, succeed and they're taking care of their physical bodies, but little to no attention is being given to that part of them that's going to live on forever. And so uh, we've been talking about this idea of a soul detox, and we hear a lot about detoxification or detoxing, keeping our bodies healthy, and that's a good thing. But we're also talking uh, now about detoxing our soul, that part of you that is uh, the central part of who you really are. And, um, you know, we want to give more time and attention to, to make sure that we're taking care of that part that's going to live on forever. Um, getting rid of anything that would keep us away from God, away from his truth, or away from his will for our life. That would be a spiritual toxin. Those are the things that we're trying to get rid of as we're thinking through and praying through this series and as we're going to the word of God. So a person can look just fine on the outside, but on the inside, their soul is tortured. Even as I bring that up, there would be some of you that might be in a position where you'd say, you know, I can relate. And you're thinking personally, how does that connect with you uh, today? Um, I'm going to give you a passage of scripture that I think uh, where Paul explains it well. See if you can relate. Romans chapter 7 verse 15. He says, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, that I do. There's this internal battle. There could be this struggle that's going on in your life that's torturing your soul. And see if you can relate to this. Maybe you're the kind of person that's done this before where you say, God, 
I will never do that again. God, I am so sorry for what I've done. I am so ashamed of what I've done. I, I, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to change. It's never going to happen again. We're never going down this road again. God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And then before you know it, you do it again, whatever it is. And you're plagued with guilt, and there's this inward sense of conviction. And then what happens as you play this on out, the tendency is to try to cover up that sin that you don't want anybody to know about. And so what happens is you wear a mask. Kind of put the mask on and you show up at church with your church face and you look good and you try to fool people and you may look the part on the outside, but inwardly your soul is in utter turmoil. Your soul is being tortured because of some secret sin. Now, Scripture tells us what's happening, and I want you to see this from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. It says, Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world, abstain from sinful desires, get this, which war against your soul. Did you know that? Did you know there was actually a war against your soul? Maybe that's news to some. We want to help you identify what it is that's warring against your soul. First, we want you to know there's a war against your soul. And then we want to try to help you understand what it is that is warring against your soul. What is it that causes you to feel like you're never going to measure up? What is it that keeps you in bondage day in and day out, week in and week out, year after year after year? What is it that causes you to feel like God could never accept you or ever love you what is it that tortures your soul what is it that tortures your soul there's probably a lot of options a lot of ideas a lot of possibilities I'm going to give you two of the main ones two categorically broad areas that could be where your soul is tortured today and I have no doubt this will speak to where many of you are living this very hour Two things that torture our soul. The first, our soul is tortured by the things we've done. Our soul is tortured by the things that we've done. We do something that breaks the heart of God. It breaks our heart. We know that it would break the hearts of others if they knew about it. And we feel guilty and we carry around this unconfessed sin. And it's torture. There's no other way to say it. David's a great example. I mean, uh, Psalm chapter 38, verses 3 and 4, he was feeling the weight of sin when he prayed and said, God, because of your wrath, there's no health in my body. My bones have no soundness because of my sin. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. David's basically saying, you know, I'm overwhelmed. I don't have the inward strength to carry me on because of the weight of this sin that is within me. I am tortured. I am in turmoil. I'm turned wrong side out in my soul. Maybe you can relate because you don't tell anybody and you're living with this tremendous guilt, this tremendous shame, and you are inwardly tortured at the deepest part of who you are, and you can relate. So the question is, why are we tortured in our soul? Sometimes it is because of the secret sin that we carry. Now, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is one of those messages that's not easy to deliver and it's not easy to hear. But I just want to tell you, I want to approach this as lovingly and delicately and as sensitively as I can. And I have prayed for the Lord to help me in that, and I've prayed for him to help you to receive and hear what I'm about to share with you. Um, some of you are carrying a secret sin in your soul today. And that sin is rooted in one of the most basic appetites of humanity. It is a sin that carries with it incredible guilt. With the advent of the internet, it is easier to keep a secret than it's ever been, and unfortunately, it is more accessible than it has ever been. The words sex and porn are among the top five search terms for kids 18 and under on the internet. But that's not just the end of the problem. That's just the beginning because it's not just a teenage problem. It is a problem that is affecting our nation and it is a problem that is affecting our world. 
Pornography is a $97 billion industry in our world today. That's billion with a B. Uh, what often begins as a secret, maybe even accidentally in adolescence, is a sin that can privately haunt a person for the rest of their lives if it goes unresolved. This is uh, something in your life that has crept in that you'd like to be rid of, and 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago, you would have thought you would have been done with it by now. But it remains, and you feel hopeless. It has a stranglehold on you, and not only do you sin in secret, but you secretly wonder if you will ever be free. You hate what you're doing. You want to be free. You want it to be different. You know it could destroy your marriage. You realize that it could ruin your reputation. I've known people through the years that have lost their job because of it. It occupies inordinate amounts of your time and attention. And if you're honest, you'd have to admit that it's become an obsession. You're embarrassed about it and you're tortured because of it and you want to be free. And I want you to know you can be free with God's help. That's one of the things that uh, secretly we do that can corrupt our soul and cause this torture and turmoil to take place. Others are living a lie. You're misrepresenting yourself in some way. Maybe you've cheated on someone or something, and in the back of your mind, you know that if it was found out, it would be devastating on so many levels. And so you just keep this secret, and because you're keeping the secret, your soul is tortured. The tortured soul is often a result of living with a private sin. It could be so many things. A lot of guilt and shame. You don't even know what to do. For some, it's overspending. In the emptiness of this world, you just find ways to try to find fulfillment. And so you spend more and spend more and spend more. And then you lie about your spending because you're embarrassed about it because you know it's over the top. And you try to cover it up as you sink deeper and deeper and deeper into debt. For some, in a service like this, there's no question that it's about an addiction. Where you smoked something or drank something or popped something and now you feel like you can't stop. And you know down deep inside if it ever became public, it could be really detrimental to your career and your marriage and your family and your health and your reputation. Maybe you had an abortion, you never told anybody. Maybe you committed a crime and you think that it's a secret and, and for the most part it is, but the problem is it's not a secret to you because you know and your insides are tortured. Your soul is tortured as a result. And so you hide it and you continue to suffer alone. Our soul is tortured because of the things that we've done. Secondly, our soul is tortured because of lies that we believe. Our soul is tortured because of the lies that we believe. We believe lies that our spiritual enemy, Satan, whispers in our ear. And it's been going on for years. It's been going on for decades. And we believe these lies. Look what Jesus said. He was talking to a group of people. And he said, why is my language not clear to you? Because you're unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Satan's the father of lies. We know that in our heads. We know that uh, on a surface level, but you know, we're tortured sometimes because we inadvertently have begun to believe his lies. And Satan whispers in your ear, and you know this is the truth. He comes up to you and says, if anybody knew your secret, you can't ever tell them because if anybody ever knew, they wouldn't like you. They wouldn't love you. They wouldn't want anything to do with you. If, if anybody ever finds out what you've done, they would reject you. You can't tell anyone, ever. Satan tries to connect what you did with who you are, and he wants you to believe that what you did should be a part of your identity for the rest of your life. And so since what you did was bad, he wants you to believe that you're bad. 
And he tries to connect those two with no breaking that connection. He, he wants you to believe that you're a lost cause. He wants you to believe that since you failed at something, you're a failure. He wants you to believe the lie that since you messed up once, you might as well just keep on doing it because after all, you're already damaged goods. Why, why go back and try to stay clean now? Why change? And you've heard the lie so much that you've started to believe it. And now you've decided you will have to carry your secret to the grave. That's what you've resigned yourself to. I'll just have to carry this secret to the grave. But you know what? The reality is you're not just carrying the secret to the grave. The secret is carrying you to the grave. And I want you to think about the significance of that statement. See, your soul is being tortured today. And even as I speak, you're beginning to realize that this is exactly where you are living. So what do you do when you realize you're tortured by your own private sin? What do you do when you realize you're tortured by the lies you believe? Over the last couple of weeks, we've looked at a number of passages where people actually began to communicate to or speak to their soul. Uh, one of my favorite examples is when David uh, spoke to himself. He, he spoke to his soul. He said, hey, soul, why so downcast? Put your hope in God. I want to tell you today, some of you need to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with yourself at the soul level. You need to really come clean. And, and what I want you to do this morning is encourage you to make a decision today that you will speak truth to your soul. Before you leave this room today, you're going to speak some truth to your soul. You can tell your soul two things, two truths that will set you free this morning. And the first truth is this. Tell your soul that it's better to confess your sin than it is to hide your sin. That's the truth. And I want to encourage you to tell your soul that. That it's better to confess my sin than it is to hide my sin. It's always better to tell the truth. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He who conceals his sin does not prosper, but whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Do you believe that? Do you believe it's the truth? Unconfessed sin is like a poison to your soul. If you hold it in, it will kill you. It will destroy you. Don't ever underestimate the, the power, the destructive power of unconfessed sin in your life because it's poison. And confession has to go two ways. We confess, first of all, to God for forgiveness of sin. That's why we confess to him. 1 John 1, 9 is a powerful passage. It says, if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us or purify us from all unrighteousness. That right there is a promise straight out of the word of God. When you confess your sins, your sins are forgiven. I love Psalm chapter 103 when it comes to confession. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we're formed, and he remembers that we're dust. God remembers what we forget, that we're dust. But he forgets what we remember, our sin. Last night at the Casting Crowns concert, uh, you know, one of the songs they sing says, just how far is the East is from the West. A lot of you knew the song and sung along with it, and it's a great song, and it's theologically accurate, and it's, it's powerful. And in the song, the lyrics say, just how far is the East from the West? And it says, from one scarred hand to the other, talking about the redemption that is ours in Christ Jesus. But Psalm chapter 103 talks about the fact that our confessed sin is taken from us as far as the east is from the west. And the idea with that is that you can go east to infinity. There's no east pole. You can go west to infinity. There's no west pole. And I think that's not a mistake that the scripture st states it so emphatically that it is far as the east is from the west. That's how far your confessed sin is removed from you. Think about that. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. 
I think this is kind of the verse of scripture where that statement comes from. I've heard people, maybe some of the old timers used to say, well, you know, your confessed sin, it's going to be thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. You know, there's no passage of scripture that talks about a sea of forgetfulness, but it does say what we just read in Hebrews, that our sins are remembered no more. It does say that our sins confessed to God are as placed as far as the east is from the west. That's what the Bible tells us. So we confess to God for forgiveness. Secondly, we confess to people for healing. We confess to people for healing. We confess to God for forgiveness, but to one another for healing. James chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Confession's hard. But I want you to understand something this morning, folks. Even though confession is hard, it is healthy and it is good. It will bring health and healing to a troubled soul. And it is definitely better to confess your sins than it is to hide your sins. Definitely better. Proverbs 28, 13, we looked at it a moment ago. He who conceals his sin does not prosper, but whoever confesses, and I've underlined it this time, and renounces them, renounces his sin, that's who finds mercy. You see, renouncing your sins means you're not only sorry, but you're sorry enough to change. Confession means you're ready to come clean and get some help. But if you want to keep it a secret... I would tell you that hidden sin keeps you trapped in its destructive cycle. And so we've got to talk to our soul. We've got to speak up at the soul level and tell our soul it's better to confess my sin than it is to hide my sin. But I also want you to tell your soul something else that is truth. And that is that Christ will set me free. And that's incredibly great news for every one of us this morning. Christ will set me free. You don't have to live in bondage. You don't have to live with that secret. You don't have to be tortured. You don't have to live the way you've been living because there is a better way. And yes, you can be free. I don't care who you are or what you've done. You can be free according to the word of God. That is the truth of the gospel. Satan lies to you and says, hey, you're always going to be this way. Nothing's ever going to change. But that's a lie. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. That's what the Bible says. And so I tell you, talk to your soul today. Talk to your soul this morning and say, hey, soul, greater is the one that is in me than he that's in the world. Hey, soul, I, I want to tell you where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, soul, there is peace. And there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So I want you to know that if Christ sets me free, I'm free indeed. You need to talk to your soul sometimes and say, soul, you don't always have to be trapped and tortured in this private sin because there is a better way. Take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Paul tells us there's a better way. Talking about temptation, he said, No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Folks, this is the truth. Our God always provides a way. Our God always provides a way. You're not in a situation where there's no escape because God promised there will always be a way. When it comes to temptation, you find your way over it, around it, or through it because God's the way maker. And you may say, Steve, but I feel trapped and I feel helpless and I feel tortured and alone and I can't get out. Hey, he will make a way when it seems there is no way. And if you'll be honest and look, he will give you a way out. With Jesus Christ, there's always a way out. You don't have to remain in bondage. You can be free. and You can confess your secret sin and God will bring healing. And so this morning, you're going to walk up to a door, and that door will be open. That door is open. And my encouragement to you is walk through it. Satan's going to lie to you and tell you all kinds of things about why you couldn't, shouldn't, hadn't, and won't, and don't. And I just want to encourage you to step through that door, walk over that threshold, because the Bible tells us he who the sun sets free is free indeed. 
And today could be a liberating day for some of you because you have been in bondage for years and years and years. And you know exactly who I'm speaking to. And it's not because I've been reading your mail or not because I spoke to your spouse or your mom or your dad or your kids or somebody. It's because God has come and is speaking on the heart level at the soul level to some folks here today about some things that need to be different in your life. And and no more excuses, no more copping out, no more making the blame. We're just gonna say, Lord, I want what you want. I want freedom and I am sick and tired of being tortured at the soul level. And I'm going to step through that door and receive healing and cleansing and forgiveness. I want you to understand this morning that Jesus Christ paid your debt and he died in your place and he didn't do it so that you could stay locked into Satan lies for the rest of your life. He didn't do it so that you'd be locked into those lies that Satan wants to whisper into your ear anymore. He wants you to be free. And so you'll have a choice to make. Do I stay where I've been or do I step into freedom? Do I live in bondage or do I live in freedom? Will I choose to hide my sin or will I choose to confess it? The choice is yours and the choice is mine. And so... Some of you are coming to a crossroads right now. And as we come toward the end of this message, you, you're going to have to make a choice. And there's going to be a question, what am I going to do? Am I going to keep carrying my secret? Am I going to remain in bondage? Will I remain a tortured soul all alone? Or will I ask God for help? And will I ask others for help? That's your choice. And I want to encourage you to make a good one. Make the right one. Because freedom is available. And some of you are sitting there thinking, can this be? And you're having conversations with yourself. And even in this service, Satan is whispering lies in your ear. And I say, Satan, be bound and removed from this place. Because in the name of Jesus Christ, I want people to hear the truth that freedom and deliverance and redemption and hope and peace and liberty is available in him for you and for you and for you. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how long it's been going on. Today can be a new day. See, Jesus Christ is in the business of transforming lives, turning them around and going from our way and the world's way and a way of wickedness to going God's way to where there is a hope and there is a future. And so in these next few moments, I'm going to share one passage of Scripture. And then we're going to take some time as we're doing every week in this series for a little soul detox. We're going to just pause and be still before God and Reflect on him and on his word and what the Spirit of God is saying. And, and some of you will do that right there from your seat. Some of you might do it at an altar of prayer. Some of you might kneel where you are. But after I read a couple of passages, we're going to watch a video and then we're going to pray together. And as we do this, you just get where God wants you to get. Be where God wants you to be. And respond how he desires for you to respond and how you desire to respond. Don't listen to the lie. Don't listen to the liar. 1 Peter chapter 2. This is from the New International Version. It says, He himself, talking about Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you've been healed. Look at that verse. That we might die to sins. It doesn't say coexist with sin or mingle with sin or tamper with sin or play around with sin so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you've been healed. And then a paraphrase, the living Bible, that same passage that I want you to see says Jesus himself personally carried the load of our sins in his own body when he died on the cross so that we can be finished with sin and live a good life from now on. For his wounds have healed ours. Be finished with sin and live a good life from now on. Does that appeal to you? Does that sound good to you? Does it sound like something you desire? It's time for a little soul detox. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. Watch this.
Seems like all I could see was the struggle close your eyes I just have a feeling that in a service like this there would be some who really needed to hear what's been spoken and God has been faithful and through the power of his spirit he has moved on your heart this morning and it's not because of words that I have said but it's because of the words that he has said. When you find yourself in a service like this, thinking that's good, I'm glad. I'm thankful that they can be free. I'm thankful he can be she, free and she can be free, but you somehow wonder if it can be true personally. It's time to let your soul be cleansed to stop listening to the father of lies and begin to hear the truth. Father, for those who are tortured at the soul level today, I pray that your spirit would minister freedom. We tell our soul today that Christ can set us free, that it's better to confess than it is to hide our sin. We recognize that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and liberty, and that he who Jesus sets free is free indeed. When we're tempted, God, you're faithful. You'll always provide a way out that we can stand up underneath the temptation. We will overcome and arise above it. There's always a way out. 
promised it in your word. And Lord, today, I pray for that man or woman, that teenager that's sitting sitting there just thinking about that sin, that sinful desire that wages war against their soul. And today, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that there would be healing, that there would be freedom, and that there would be deliverance at the soul level. God, I pray that you would give those who needed the courage to confess to you for forgiveness. Some need to confess to others for healing. Help them to realize that it's time to come out of the darkness. It's time to step into the light. And Lord, I pray especially that you'll turn a specific light on in the lives of some that are going to believe a lie and say, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it on my own and I'm going to do it now and I'm going to do it tomorrow or next week or next month. I'm going to do what needs to be done. And it's the same lie they've told themselves a thousand times before. Help them to realize today that if they could have done it on their own, it would have been done a long time ago. But in humility now, Lord, we need to acknowledge that we need you. We need our church family. We need our biological family. We need our brothers and sisters in Christ to encourage and to listen and to pray and believe that we might be healed. And Lord, I thank you in advance for those who are finding cleansing on the soul level today. I pray for those that are under the weight and the burden and the guilt of sin that today they would confess that sin to you and claim the promise of your word that says they can be forgiven and purified and free. Jesus, the sinless Son of God, became sin for us on the cross. He died and rose again so that anyone so that anyone, so that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. God, fill us with that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead because he can do exactly what needs to be done in our life today if we will allow him to do exactly that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This is one of those services that when you come to the end, it's just a little bit hard to know what to do with it. It's a little hard to know what to say. My encouragement to you as you go from this place is to to allow the Spirit of God to cultivate and churn what has been stirred in this time together. Go back and look at the outline. Go back and watch or listen online. Read those scriptures and think about what it means to you personally. Today could be a day of deliverance for some. I believe it will be so. And I wanna encourage you to be here next week as we wrap up this series. We're gonna be talking about a seduced soul And man, if there's ever been a time in our life and in our world where our souls could be seduced, it's now, and it's time for us to be cleansed, and it's time for us to heighten our awareness and be tuned in to what's going on around us and the impact that it's having on our soul, the very core of who we are, the eternal part of each and every one of us. But as you go, my prayer is that you don't just go and walk away and forget about it that you work through what it is the Lord has spoken to you here today and that you do what he calls you to do and that you obey. Don't listen to the father of lies anymore. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And as you do that, the things of this earth, including the secret sins of the past, will grow strangely dim in the light of of his glory and grace. Would you stand with me, please, as we pray? Lord, in these uh, moments, we've walked through some 
deep water. Thankful we don't walk through it alone. That you are right here with us. That you will guide us. That you will not allow the waters to overtake us and drag us down because it can feel overwhelming and scary because for some we're in uncharted waters. The thought of actually living clean and living free and living an obedient life to Christ, it's just foreign to us because we've lived our whole life hiding and shameful and guilty and and wearing masks and trying to play the game. But today, Lord, the call is to authenticity. The call is to reality. The call is to freedom, to grace, forgiveness. And so today, Lord, I pray that the tortured soul for those in this room and those listening online or on the radio will be no more. That freedom will come from our source, the only source of true freedom, Jesus Christ. We pray it in your matchless name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.